So we're going to talk about PSMA uh, targeted therapy. Uh, some of the advances that have been presented at this meeting, I mean, clearly the vision trial is, is, is really groundbreaking and it's showing a 40% reduction in risk of death at four months and a four month improvement in the median survival. And uh, this is compared to standard of care alone, the hazard ratio is 0.62. And we're going to be needing PET imaging with gallium PSMA 11 uh, to determine uh, uh, PSMA positivity. And there's also the Palafri study, which is showing uh, positivity and could be an imaging agent for prostate cancer. So the question is, how can we wed immune therapy with PSMA? Uh, we know that PSMA is expressed as an antigen. It's surface to surface membrane protein. The exact function of it is probably a transport protein, but uh, it's not really been clearly elucidated, but it, it provides a good target for immune therapy. Uh, so where have we gone with immune therapy? We know that Pembro is approved by the FDA for MSI prostate cancer, but that only counts for 3% of all prostate cancer. Provenge is also approved, which shows a, a, a um, minimal activity in terms of PSA declines or uh, objective responses, but it does show an improvement in survival about four months, which is uh, one of the, the, the quagmires of this particular uh, product and I think is limited its use in some patients, but nonetheless, it does show a survival benefit. PROSVAC, unfortunately, negative trials. CTLA-4 checkpoint inhibitors in a trial that was published uh, a couple of years ago, uh, there was a uh, overall negative study, but if you took the bone-only patients, it, was po it would have been positive. And uh, it, particularly in those patients of high tumor burden, um, combination therapy with nivolumab seems to have some activity. So CAR T cells, we've heard a lot about CAR T cells in a variety of different tumors, and this has predominantly been in the liquid tumor types, leukemias and lymphomas. Uh, this has been approved in those tumor types in tumors that uh, tar we will target CD CD19, and there are a variety of different uh, products that are out there, both with uh, Novartis and Gilead, uh, which are for leukemia and lymphoma, and then Gilead has a product that is also approved for mantle cell lymphoma. Uh, these are extremely active drugs. They require um, monitoring. You can see something called cytokine release syndrome with it, uh, which is almost like a shock-like syndrome, and which, which was a problem which has been now worked out well uh, in uh, the, these particular treatments. Uh, but unfortunately, in solid tumors, this has not been uh, the, a really good, uh, at least a lot of activity. There have been some PSMA-targeted uh, CAR T cells that unfortunately have not shown uh, any efficacy. And uh, so there's, overall, there's been a lack of persistence and efficacy of the T cells. And there are new t technologies that are being evaluated to make these T cells more active. And um, uh, T immunity has also encountered two deaths with a PSMA targeted CAR T cell, which uh, caused them to uh, terminate their early stage program. So again, predominantly because of cytokine release syndrome. So we, we hear about CAR T cells, but there are different versions of CAR T cells, and they're not all the same. So there, we can go from the less differentiated T CAR T cells to the more differentiated. Obviously, going earlier in my mind is better. Uh, because uh, these potentially can be self-renewing, they're long-lived, and they also can be multipotent, and they can recognize a variety of different antigens. Uh, as you start going further and further along and become more differentiated, uh, they become less stem-like, and uh, what we like, would like to do is to look at these T cells earlier in the course of disease, and these seem to be, these, these TSM T, T cells seem to be more, better correlated with better responses in, in, in the clinic. There's less toxicity, and more gradual tumor uh, 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 killing, which again can prevent cytokine release syndrome, a better duration of response. And then these can also engraft in the bone marrow, and this can, of course, perpetuate itself and lead to a long-term response uh, with these CAR T cells. So again, uh, the conventional perception was that the responses have been poor to date, but CAR T cells can cause complete responses in solid tumors, but you need more doses of the more differentiated cells because, again, they can't engraft. And the approach that's now being taken uh, by using a high percentage of these, these TSCM cells, the earlier cells, which can engraft, self-renew, and then create a wave of more differentiated effector cells with one administration. Uh, so this has been looked at in vivo uh, in, uh, in animals uh, where uh, using imaging techniques 
uh, they found by, by using this particular CAR T cell approach that you can eliminate tumors at 100% of the animals with standard dosages. And again, this is a targeted uh, P, uh, CAR T cell against uh, PSMA, as we see here, uh, the, the tumor only. And then uh, at low dose and then high dose, we see that there's almost complete, complete tumor regression, and it does seem to be fairly durable. Um, and this is the, uh, some of the uh, uh, data that is looked at uh, by flow, uh, the, the cells that are present, and it seems that over time, uh, particularly when the tumor is eliminated from date 2025 and then afterwards, uh, these uh, TSCM cells are persistent and they help with solid tumor elimination. So there's currently a phase one trial that is now evaluating patients with castrate-resistant prostate cancer with this particular approach. It's, it's, it's being sponsored by Poseida. And it, again, there's a high percentage of, of memory cells, and it acts more like a prodrug rather than the drug. It then engrafts itself into the bone marrow. There's less chance of, of cytokine release syndrome because of the slower expansion of T cells and then, of course, uh, the slower tumor responses. And this can potentially la lead to overall greater efficacy. So uh, I'm excited about this approach. It is now in phase one. And, um, and this is some initial, initial patient data uh, that's shown in one case that there is a 50 rapid PSA decline rate of 50%. Uh, with a, a reduction in PSMA PET imaging, and uh, uh, there was a grade one CRS in this patient. Uh, as you, you can see pretty nicely from this PSMA scan, uh, the tumor does regress. So I think it's, I think it's going to be an effective approach, and um, uh, this, again, uh, is a different way of approaching T cells uh, rather than looking at the more differentiated ones going earlier. And there'll be updates coming this year on this product, hopefully, either at ESMO or perhaps ASCO-GU.